This is quite um, exciting and, and unbelievable, but just talk our viewers through how this actually came about. Well, thank you so much for, for having me. I, uh, as a group, we have a lot of experience working on producing embryos in the lab. We have been doing this for years. We are very good at producing embryos in cattle and horses. Two years ago, uh, we produced the first IVF embryos in, in, in donkeys and also in zebras. Um, and since I'm in Australia, the University of, of Queensland, um, we decided that start shifting our focus and, and, and moving into this very peculiar uh, group of ma mammals, ma marsupials. And um, yeah, that's when we started to set up the technology for them. And the best candidate for that was the kangaroo because it's uh, an iconic species for, for Australia and also because it's abundant. Yeah, and, you know, obviously alongside kangaroos, uh, there's concern about other um, endangered animals. Um, the Tasmanian devil, for example, there are certain types of wombats uh, as well. I mean, uh, Australia is full of, of these very unique um, animals um, that, and there is ongoing concern about whether they are endangered and fears around their extinction. So just talk us through how this will now ensure or that that doesn't happen, or at least slow the pace down? Yeah, so Australia is home for more than 150 species of marsupials. Uh, but unfortunately, many of them are facing many threats and they are endangered. Um, assisted reproductive technologies like IVF and producing embryos in the lab are a great tool for conservation. Um, it's, it's not a magic solution, uh, but it's one more tool in our conservation toolkit that we can have for uh, to, to implement in, in, in conservation program in this species. So we are using the kangaroo as a model because to fine tune this technology and understand what we need to change to make embryos grow and to be healthy in a Petri dish, we need to run many experiments. So kangaroo, it's, it's a good model because we can get plenty of eggs and sperm and, and eggs and sperm is are the two cells that we need to make embryos. Um, so when we now move into endangered marsupials where, where this technology come in place is because we can rescue genetic that is dying in this population and uh, trying to genetic diversity and endangered species is crucial for their survival. So what we can do is we can, now that we are setting up the technology, every time that a, an endangered species animal die, we can collect the sperm if it is a male, we can collect eggs if it is a female, and then we can preserve these cells in our laboratory. And whenever it's needed, we can produce embryos. And with these embryos, uh, potentially in the future, we can transfer that embryo into a, uh, a female again, and hopefully be able to reintroduce that genetic that was lost, for example, many years ago. So we are not thinking in a, in a short term here, we are, we are thinking way uh, in the future because we, can, we should be uh, preserving genetic, we call that biobanking, uh, and biobanking in marsupials is still in its initial phases um, to later on be able to use that genetic that we have in our labs and put it back into the wild. So, so you're starting this then with kangaroos because, it, as you say, it's iconic, but probably easier than, than some of the other marsupials. And then you're able to basically copy that same practice on the others. Yes, that's, that's kind of the, the general explanation, but it, it's not going to be as easy to copy and paste what we are doing in kangaroo in koalas, for example, because even though they belong to the same group of animals, they're both marsupials, for example, uh, they, they still have many differences in their, their reproductive strategy. So for all the marsupial species, we're gonna have to, again, do some fine tuning of this technology in the lab to make able to produce embryos. But this is, this is uh, initial stages of applying the technologies to, to marsupial. But yes, the concept is we now have a, a marsupial model 
that we can uh, keep developing this and many other technologies. And another fascinating thing about now producing embryos in the lab in marsupials uh, is that okay. this allows us to understand more about the reproductive physiology. Imagine that now we have embryos in a petri dish and we can see how the embryos develop, how these embryos grow. Yeah. And that's got huge implications on uh, conservation programs because we yes. can design new tools for um, what to, contraception. I'm so sorry, Do Dr. Gambini. We're, we're actually running out of time, um, so I'm going to have to end it there. But thank you so much for joining us here on no the worries. program. Thank you for having me.